Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be having a look at density, mass, and volume. And we're gonna specifically be looking at density questions where we're actually looking at the shapes that are involved. So another video that I have done is looking at density mixtures, and I will link that in the description, but we will not be looking at any density mixtures in this question. We're just gonna be looking at some standard exam style questions, looking at density. So we're gonna build up to questions like the one you can see on the screen. We've got quite a few different questions to have a look at, so let's get started. Okay, so the first question that we're gonna have a look at is this one here. Now, as with all density questions, we need to know the formula. So the formula is very important to know, and that is that density is equal to mass divided by volume. So if density is equal to mass divided by volume, we could rearrange that if we were looking for mass or if we were looking for volume. And if you want to rearrange the formula, that's absolutely fine. Or you could go about using a formula triangle. So our formula triangle for density, mass, and volume is just drawn like this, where density is equal to mass divided by volume. And of course, you can use either method. I'm gonna use the formula triangle for this video just to make sure that it caters to anybody that does like to use them. But of course, you can rearrange the formula. Now with this question here, it says a gold bar has a mass of 12.5 kilograms. So the density of the gold is 19.3 grams per centimeter cubed. Work out the volume of the gold bar and give your answer to correct to three significant figures. So that last little bit there gives us a big hint that this is going to be a calculator based question and we are going to use a calculator throughout all of these questions within the video. So make sure you've got a calculator, make some notes on this and we're going to just have a look at using the formula to start with. So it says here that we have a mass and it's in 12.5 kilograms, but then it gives us a density and it says that that's in grams per centimetre cubed. So if we are going to use this, we need to make sure that we use the units that are within our density. Again, there are other ways of doing it, but the easiest way for us to go about this is just to change our kilogram mass into a mass in grams. So there are 1000 grams in a kilogram. So if we do 12.5 and we times that by 1,000, it turns it into an amount of grams for us. So that is going to be 12,500 grams. So now we actually have everything in the same units. We've got our mass in grams. We've got our density in grams per centimetre cubed. To work out the volume, we can just plug it into our formula and we'll get an answer in centimetre cubed. So looking at our formula, we are trying to work out a volume. So we would cover up the V on our formula triangle and it tells us that is mass divided by density. So to work out the volume, we're gonna do the mass in grams, which would be 12,500. And we're gonna divide that by the density, which is 19.3. It's all in the same units. And we're just gonna type that into our calculator. So if I type that in, we get 12,500 divided by 19.3 and that comes out as 647 point and then we've got a few decimals here six six eight three nine three eight and always write down all of the answer on the calculator there and then we're going to round that to our final answer which it says to three significant figures so if we're going to round this to three significant figures we've got the six four seven so we're going to chop it just here and it's a six after there so that is going to round to 640 and that's going to round up to eight now the units, this is now a volume. Our volume units are in the question already. It's centimetres cubed. And there we go, that would be our final answer, 648 centimetre cubed. And we've given that there to three significant figures. So there we go, that's how we go about looking at these. And as, you, as I was kind of mentioning here, the important thing that we're doing is we're making sure that all the units are the same. So any mass units are gonna match what's in our density unit and any volumes would be matched to what's in our density units again. So let's have a look at a couple of questions here and then we will have a look at working out some densities when we've actually got the shapes. Okay, so here's your two questions. Again, these are both calculator questions, so pause the video there, have a go at working out these two, and we'll go over the answers in just a second. Okay, so for the first one, a silver bar has a mass of 14 kilograms. So that is going to be straight away into grams, because that next line is in grams per centimetre cubed. That'll be 14,000 grams. There we go. So 
putting that into our formula and I always write down my formula triangle here for every single question so density mass volume it says find the volume of the silver bar to three significant figures so again we're going to be mass divided by density so 14,000 we'll divide that by our density which is 10.5 and if we type that into a calculator 14,000 divided by 10.5 gives us an answer here of 1,333 and it's 0.3 recurring. Again we're going to round this to three significant figures so that'll be 133 so chopping it just there and then rounding that to three significant figures so 1330 that would go to after the line it's a three so that would just go to 1330. Again it's a volume so that would be centimeters cubed and that would be our final answer for that question. Okay moving on to the next one. We've already got our formula triangle written down so we'll go with that one. 40 kilograms and again it needs to be in grams per centimeter cubed so we'll change that that'd be 40,000 and this is about an oak door so we're working out the volume of the oak door so 40,000 is our mass and we'll divide that again by our density which this time is 0 0.85 there we go and we are dividing by a number less than one so our answer this time is going to be bigger than 40,000 so let's type this in 0.85 and we get 47,000 and it comes out as 47,058 but quite a few decimals here 82353 there we go we don't need all of those because we're only going to round to three significant figures so 470 so we're going to chop it just after the zero not forgetting that zero is a significant figure when it appears after a whole number so if we round that we get 47,000 there we go, zero after the five, after the line it's a five, so that zero there would round up to a one. So four, seven, one, zero, zero, that takes us up to the decimal point there. So it's 47,100, and again, that's gonna be in centimeters cubed. And there we go, there's our final answer. Okay, so there we go, that's looking at just using the formula and making sure that units are both the same, all very similar questions. So let's have a look at something slightly different. Okay, so this question says the diagram shows a triangular prism. And it says the prism is made from wood with a density of 0 0.8 grams per centimeter cubed. Work out the mass of the prism. So just thinking about our formula very quickly, to get mass, density is equal to mass over volume. So to work out mass, we would cover up the M and it's density times volume. So in this question, all we need to do is density times volume. We've got the density, but we've not been given the volume. So we've been given the diagram instead. So for this here, you do need to know how to work out the volume of a prism. Again, I will link that video in the description so that you can have a look at that if you're not sure on how to work out the volume of a triangular prism or other prisms. So I would check that out if you're not so sure. But if we go about working out the volume of this, we first look at the cross section. So the cross section on a triangular prism is obviously a triangle. And to work out the area of that before we get the volume, we'll do the base times height, which is eight times five. We don't need that diagonal length. Sorry, eight times 15. We'll divide that by two. That will give us the area of the face. Well, the cross section, so eight times 15, which is 120, divided by two is 60. So the area of the triangle is 60. That would be in centimeters squared. To get the volume, we're gonna multiply that by the depth that it goes through the shape. So 60 times 10 gives us an overall volume of 600 centimeters cubed. So there is the volume of the prism. We now need to work out its mass. So to work out the mass, we'll do 600 multiplied by the density, or the other way around as it's written in our formula triangle. So the density is 0 0.8 as given to us in the question, and we would multiply that by the 600, the volume that we've just calculated, and that'd be 0 0.8 multiplied by 600, which gives us a final answer of 480 and this is a mass, so looking at our density units, it's grams per centimeter cube just here. So that would be 480 grams, and that would be our final answer. And that's how we go about working these out. Now obviously this particular question does rely on you to know how to work out the volume of prisms. So if again, as I mentioned, if you're not too sure on working out the volume of prisms, do go check that one out. Uh, again, just linked at the top of the video in the description, or you can just find it. Um, but let's have a look at a couple of questions like this where you're given the shape and you're asked to work out something else. 
Okay, so there's two questions here. On the left, you have a triangular prism, very similar to our example. And on the right, you have a trapezium as the cross section there. So you've got a, a prism made with a trapezium as its cross section. So pause the video, have a go at both of these, and we'll go over the answers in just a second. Okay, so for the first one then, we've got a triangular prism and it's made from glass and the density there is 2.7 grams per centimetre cubed and again we're going to work out the mass. So again, just making sure we have our formula triangle written down so we can see exactly what we need to do when we get there. We need to work out the volume. So again, this has a triangular cross section. So we'll take the base times the height, which is 6 times 4. We'll divide that by 2 and that gives us 12 as the area of the face. The length that it goes through just here is 10 centimeters. That's nice and easy for us to work out. So 12 times 10 is 120, and that'll be centimeters cubed, and that's its volume. Again, we're working out the mass, so we'll cross off the M, density times volume. So the density is 2.7, just given to us in the question. So we would do 2.7 multiplied by the volume, which we've just worked out, 120, that's going to give us our final answer. We'll type that into a calculator. So 2.7 multiplied by 120 uh, gives us a final answer of 324. So 324. The units again was grams per centimetre cubed. So that would be 324 grams. And there we go. That's our final answer for the first question. On to the next one. A little bit more intensive here because we have to work out the area of the trapezium. So for the area of the trapezium, we add together the two parallel sides, so 6 plus 8. So 6 plus 8 on the front of our trapezium, we divide that by 2 to find the average length, and then multiply it by the height or the distance between them. So 6 plus 8 is 10, divided by 2 is 5, and times that by 5 gives us an area of 25 centimetres squared for the cross section. Now that area goes through the shape by 20 centimetres, so its depth or its length is 20 centimetres. So we'll do 25 multiplied by 20, the area of the cross section multiplied by the length, 25 times 20 gives us a volume that comes out as 500. So there we go, our volume is 500, and that is what we're going to use in our formula. Again, it says here that this is made from gold and that has a density of 19.3 grams per centimetre cubed. Again, we're working out the mass. So we would take the volume, which is 500, and multiply that by the density. So we'll take the density first, 19.3, multiply that by our volume of 500. And if we type that into a calculator, 19.3 multiplied by 500, we get a final answer here. And it comes out as 9,600 and 50 and that is a mass so again that's going to be in grams as our units that there were grams per centimeter cubed so there we go there's our final answer 9650 grams and that finishes off those two okay so we've got one more question to have a look at here where we involve some spheres and that will be our last question here looking at density Okay, so this is our last question here where we're going to have a look at density. So I would encourage you to pause the video, have a go at this question, see if you can get the answer. You have your formula on the right of the, on the, right of the images there. So have a go, see if you can work this one out, and we'll go over the answer in just a second. Okay, so having a look at this, it says sphere A is made with gold or made of gold with a density of 19.3 grams per centimetre cubed. Sphere B is made of silver with a density of 10.5 cm cubed. Which sphere has the greater mass? And you must show how you get your answer. So we need to show all of our working out here. So first of all, we are given both of the densities. We are not given the volume of either sphere, but we are given the information in the diagram in order to work that out. So the volume to work out of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Again, if you're not sure with working out the volume of spheres or cones, again, I'll link those videos in the description so you can check them out if you need to. But for this one here, we'll get the volume of both. So the volume of A, I would do 4 thirds, and I'd multiply that by pi, and then I will multiply that by the radius cubed. The radius of sphere A is 2 centimetres, so 2 cubed. Again, I'm just going to type that into a calculator. So 4 thirds multiplied by, make sure you can find your pi button, and then times that by 2 cubed. And that, for me, comes out as, let's have a look, and we'll write down the whole decimal here, 
three, two, one, six, four. Now I've got two options at this point. I could either go and work out the volume of B and then work out their masses, or I could just straight away work out the mass of A and then do it all with the second one. I'm gonna do that route because I've got this long number on my calculator, it just saves me typing it all back in again. So let's just straight away work out the mass. So we're writing down our formula, density, mass, and volume. So we're gonna multiply the density by the volume. So we've got our volume there. Let's just label that so we remember it's a volume, centimeter cubed. And to work out now the mass, we will take the density. So sphere A was the gold one, so that's 19.3. So we'll do 19.3 multiplied by the volume that we've just worked out, which was 33.5103264. And let's see what we get as the mass. So on my calculator, I'm just gonna press now times 19.3. And that comes out with a mass for me 646.749. Now it's likely that what's going to happen here is the numbers aren't going to be right next to each other, so I probably won't need all those decimals, but I'm going to write them all down anyway, just in case they're very, very close to one another. So that was a mass, so I'll label that in grams, and that right there is one of my answers. I just need to do the same with the other one, and then I can say which one's great has the greater mass. So if we work out the volume of sphere B, that is four thirds multiplied by pi. And the radius of this one is three, so multiplied by three cubed. So again, I'm just gonna type that in. So four thirds times pi times three cubed. And that comes out as 113. There we go, 113.097355. And there we go, we just need to finish this off now. We will work out the mass of that then. So the mass of silver is given to us just here. And if we times those together, let's just have a look and see what we get. So the, the density is 10.5. So I'd do 10.5 multiplied by 113.097355. And let's type that in. So times 10.5 on the calculator and that comes out as 1,187.522023. And again, that is in grams. So there we go. That has now worked out the mass of sphere B. So to finish this question, all we have to do is say which uh, sphere here has the greater mass, and that's shown by our working. So I would just say sphere B, has the greater mass. There we go, and we have done that by showing all of our working. And again, on a question like that, you may have been able to see actually that sphere B was gonna have the greater mass, but we wouldn't just want to write sphere B, we actually have to show our working and show how we got that answer. And we've done that, we've worked out the volume of both, we've used the density to get the mass of both, and our working clearly backs up and shows that sphere B has the greater mass. So there we go, that is our video done on density. Don't forget, obviously, that if you want to have a look at density mixtures, you'll wanna look at that one as well, and that would finish you off looking at density for all these types of questions. So I hope you enjoyed that video, hope you found it useful and helpful. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.